and welcome to That Squirrel Speaks. Today is October 31, 30, 29, 28th, is that right? And this is episode 126. Hi, how are you? It's almost Halloween's, right? Yay. But that means it's also almost November, which happened. <laughs> forever and then October's like whoop gone <sighs> what's happening so anyway I hope you're having a good month so far are you excited about Halloween Toba's gonna be a kitty cat this year Memo made her a costume it's full on Toba wanted to be I'm sorry I'm Amy Beth also known as the fat squirrel on Ravelry and it's and the fat squirrel S Q R R L on Instagram. Um, I'm your hostess and stuff. <laughs> Let's chat, shall we? Let me just force you to chat. <laughs> um, that was gonna be a kitty, kitty cat. So she really, um, what her plan was in her Tova mind was that she Tova seven was her plan was that she was going to um, buy a fur coat. We were going to buy a fur coat and she was going to be a kitty cat. Tova is very touch oriented. Like she is a huge texture person, right? I know, right? Knitting. That's kind of, I, I went to the, my former housemate used to drive, I used to drive her crazy to go shopping with me because I had to touch everything and I didn't even realize that I did it. I didn't even realize that I did that. Sometimes you need other people in your life to be like, <laughs> so evidently I touch everything all the time. And so apparently she also has <laughs> inherited the touch insanity, but she, she loves textures. And so she, like stuffed animals are always the thing. Anything that is lined with anything fluffy is a big thing. Oh my gosh. I got, I got her a uh, Sherpa lined, not real Sherpa, not like actual sheepskin, but I got her a Sherpa lined hoodie for Christmas or maybe her birthday. She's going to lose her mind. She's never going to want to take it off, which is going to be bad because she can't wear it to school, but she's going to love it. <laughs> I just, by accident, she had need, she needed some leggings for school. Um, and so I got ones and they are like fleece lined. She's, well, she just doesn't want to take them off. <laughs> anyway, so she's very touch oriented. She's just like into textures. So her thought was that she would buy, we would buy a fur coat and she could go as a cat for Christmas. And so then I informed her that A, fur coats are not inexpensive nor available at Target. And B, they have to actually kill all the animals to make the fur coat. So then she decided that she would look on Google about how to rent a fur coat. <laughs> Cause that's the obvious solution, right? But then Mamma volunteered, stepped up to the plate and volunteered to make her a kitty cat costume. So now she has like a crazy black minky head to toe, like onesie pajama almost with a hood and it's kitty cat and she's Mamma won. Mamma won the grandma award. So, so that's what we're doing. What are you doing? Is it going to be fun? I'm sure it is. Anyway. So that was not really shenanigans, but there were no shenanigans this week. I know, right? Sorry. There can't be shenanigans every week, people. Um, there have been shenanigans in my mind. We're trying to, um, <laughs> my obsession this week. That's what it should be. There's no shenanigans. It should just be like, my obsessiveness this week. Um, but this week I've been going crazy. Well, I've not been going crazy, but there's an epic, um, space struggle in my house going on right now. <laughs> there has been forever. Like we have a smallish house and we have too much stuff. Like it's, I feel like we're not hoarders, right? I hope not. We're not, we're not. There's no like newspapers from 1974 or anything. But like I own a business and I run it out of our house and that involves, and it's not like, like it's messy. Like it just is. Cause 
I sew all the time and there's always a sewing machine out and there's always fabric and there's always string everywhere and there's always like those little corners you cut off. It's just, you know, and I'm not a real tidy person. I hate to admit it, but I'm really not. I'm just not a tidy person. Confessions. Um, my husband just came down and was like, what are you doing? Talk to yourself. He ran away. Um, <laughs> I do that too. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, I'm not a tidy person. Anyway, so we're having this like struggle of like how to reorganize our home to accommodate the business and like make it less crazy because while I'm not a tidy person, untidiness really stresses me out. <laughs> That's a great combo, right? So like the stuff quotient in the house like really like, yeah, it freaks me out. It freaks me out. So we're trying to figure out how to get everything a little feng shui here up in y'all. So, because I do that. I'm not a big spring cleaner. How about you? I'm not a big spring cleaner. I'm a big fall cleaner. Like, not really clean because that's overstating it. But I'm a fall tidier. Because we're about to be up in this house for, like, five months and not be able to leave very much. So, like, you got to get it in order now, right? Do you feel that? The winter is coming. So... Anyway, so that's been like, so the all week I've been like in my head and Ikea is like on the favorites and it's like, <laughs> and I'm constantly like, what do you think about this? And my husband's just like, I don't know. <laughs> his, his solution is like that things should just magically like disappear. Like I'm like, well, what if we got shelves here and shelves here? And he's like, I feel like that's going to make the house feel like there's just, there's, there's, it's going to be so cluttered. And I'm like, well, at least the clutter will be on a shelf and not like on the table. I don't know. Anyway, that's not fun for you, right? Maybe you can identify. Maybe you'd be like, ah, oh, I'm not the only one. You're not. Although you probably don't want to identify with me. But anyway, so let's talk about knitting and spinning. There's actually spinning this week. Oh my gosh, I totally left that over there. <gasps> Husband! Yeah. Can you come here for a minute? So I did actually get some spinning done this week. I touched my wheel. I spun actually quite a lot. Unbelievably. Did you hand me that yarn that's over there that I forgot to get? You don't have to be on the camera. Just hand it to me, like right here. Thanks, helper! Anyway... <laughs> So I did get some spinning done. Pow. And it's very Halloween-y, right? This is from Spun Right Round. It is Merino Silk, which I'm not a huge Merino Silk person, but that was very enjoyable. And I have about 300 yards of a two-ply. And this is the colorway squash out of four ounces. So it's like a sportish. And it is a gradient. Oh, why did I put the... See how I put the, t I put the tag on there after I skeined it? But at least I put a tag on it. But so anyway, so it's just a gradient. But what I did this time, it actually, it worked surprisingly well. I did, um, I just split the braid in half. Like I opened it up like that. And then just spun each side. And I was really afraid because there was such a, like I spun the first half. And then not quite finished the first half. And then waited like, you know, a month to spin again. So I was really afraid it would be horrifically unmatched, but it wasn't too bad. And while it is not the most evenly spun yarn in the world, not bad. You won't even well know, so I knitted up some more bad. Probably won't even notice. But so it's really fun. It goes from the yellow to the orange to a purple, or to a grayish black to a purple. Right. Totally fun. So yay that. And then I actually have even something else to show you. It's not finished. Don't get, don't affect that much of me. Um, so, this will be a shorter episode, by the way. So I don't have that much to show you. And obviously I had no shenanigans. Um, but I will talk about what I'm spinning and knitting and then maybe what I'm watching and reading. Maybe, if that seems reasonable. So the next thing I'm knitting, or knitting, the next thing I'm spinning, I'm getting more self-conscious because my husband is down here. The next thing I'm spinning is from, it's Pullworth from Fat Cat Knits in the Indian Corn colorway. Do you see that? That does in fact say 10 ounces. I don't know. 
I ordered 10 ounces. I don't have 10 ounces of anything. Why not? <laughs> right? <laughs> so my plan, and this is what it looks like in the braid. <gasps> right? It's pretty. I said it's Polworth, right? So my plan is just to spin a two-ply, because it's got, I would love to have a three-ply out of it, but it's got two, I think it's got too many colors. I think it would just look crazy. So um, the first half I am spinning just straight from the braid, because it has have relatively short color repeats. Here's the part that's open. See, they're pretty short. And then the second half, I don't know if I'll spin it the if I'll spin it or if I'll split it in half and then spin it. I don't know what's going to happen. But here it is so far. This is not the full five ounces. I probably have another ounce and a smidge, an ounce and a half-ish. So there it is. So just again, just really thick. That's my end. That's not in there. Um, so just doing it really thick. I'm thinking I'm gonna want to make a cowl with it. Like a big long thickety doodah cowl. Now knitting. I have I have no finished objects. Shut the front door. I still haven't knit on that baby sweater. I know. Oh, epic failure. So I know, I have no excuses. So the first thing I want to show you is if I hope I can find the pattern and not be ridiculous. Whoa! Laura Neal's new book, her sock book, Sock Architecture, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? I am knitting the Dyad socks. That's what it is. I couldn't remember. I'm knitting the Dyad socks. And they look, they're toe up with this fun little saddle heel with contrasting toes and heels and in the pattern contrasting cuffs, but I did not do the cuffs contrasting. And I am knitting those with lollipop yarn and her new beefcake base, which is the heavier, almost like a sportish weight one. Um, so yes, lollipop. This is the whiskey bent and hell bound colorway. Right. This is what the stripes are, but are you ready? Six rows trouble. Six rows shenanigans, six rows rowdy, six rows bad to the bone, all surrounded by four rows of bourbon, and mini me in the bad to the bone. And thank you so much, Joan. Thank you. So here is, I have one finished sock. Yeah, right? So I decided, I, I contemplated doing the cuff in the, the contrasting, but I just... Wanted more stripes. Who doesn't? So isn't that cute? And I really like this little sock. I like how the the pattern. I like how it fits quite well. It has a fun sideways toe. So you can see the toe looks like a cute little moosey hat. And like put eyes on it and it would be a moose. I don't know. I don't know. Or <gasps> it would be a platypus. My platypus toe. And it has a fun heel with no gusset, but it fits quite nicely. Isn't that nice? Not an afterthought because you do it while you're doing the sock um, when you get to that place. But again, very easy to pop in a contrasting color or if you didn't want to do a contrasting color, it'd be very easy just to do it in the stripes still. But so yay, yeah, that. And I haven't even started the second one because the toe, I have to look up how to do the toe. And as I've mentioned before, I'm mildly lazy. So the only difference I'm doing, I'm knitting those on zeros instead of my normal socks. I do a double zero um, because the the weight, the yarn is a heavier weight yarn. Yeah, and there it is so far. Okay, and then I have one more sock to show you. I finished one of my Halloween socks. I know, right? I got like three days to finish the other one. Gosh, I know. But look at how fun that is. What? So this is simply sock yarn in the post stripe. That's their self stripe. Their in house self striping in the Elm Street colorway. I did mine cuff down with an actual gusset heel 
slip stitch gusset heel, which I usually don't do on self stripers. But this is an Coriadale wool mix, and I had trouble with it being too tight of a gauge. Not it's nothing with the yarn or anything. It's just you know you di you knit different yarns differently, and it's not really a thinner yarn. It just has more grab, and so I think my tension is is a little bit tighter. Um, words. Mm -hmm. So I knit the leg on a zero and the foot on a double zero, and there's very minimal difference in gauge, but it's slight, and I would probably notice it. But it looks a little <coughs> bit richer in real life. Like, I feel like that's kind of washing it out just because of this sheer insanity of color. Um, so it looks a little richer. Like, maybe if I put it on there closer, maybe it'll color balance out a little bit. It's a little bit better. But it's not fun. So I have this much on the second one. <laughs> <coughs> and then <laughs> the last thing I just show you is a, is a when knitting attacks when knitting attacks <coughs> thank you knit more girls but no thank you to knitting attacking it's not that bad but it's kind of bad <laughs> it's stupid which makes it worse you know what I mean? Like when you make a mistake, you're like, oh, that's a shame. But when you make a stupid mistake, you're like, son of a... And it's, of course, on a sweater. Of course it is. So I'm knitting this Stroker sweater. And that is, of course, by Usulda. And it's a very cute little... I'm doing mine short... My plan is to do... It's a pullover. It's bottom up. And my plan is to make mine short sleeves. Or maybe even cap sleeve that short sleeve but I may have to even alter that plan a little bit I'm making mine with Bartlett yarns it's a worsted weight I told you what color it was last time it's color dark heather I knit my gauge swatch on fives I went today to um, try it on it's not like this much right I'm almost done with the bust increases, so I just want to make sure it was like hitting at an appropriate level. So I'm like 11, no I'm even, I think I'm 11 inches, that's quite a bit. It is worse to wait, so it's not a ridiculous number of stitches, but it's, you know, that's a lot of knitting. What do you need, honey? Um, I went today to Try it on. And I was um, switching out the needles because I wanted to put it, I, I was, it's on a fixed circular, it's on a Chagu fix, and I was going to put it onto, um, I can't talk. I'm so upset. No, I'm not really that upset. I was going to put it on the interchangeables because I can, I have a, like a 50 inch cable and then I can put a connector in there and make it like 80 inches so that when you try it on, you don't even have to worry about your elbows pulling out or anything. It's magic. And so I was going to put it on the different size needles, the different cable length and realize that I don't know how I don't even drink. I really that much. I somehow have knit 11 inches of this sweater on a size 3 needle when I knit the gauge on a 5. How did I, how did I, how did I do that? So, I was a little bit afraid that when I put it on it was like not even going to fit, but I knew as soon as I got it on the longer cable that it would go onto my body. The issue now, however, is that while I had planned to have an inch of positive ease in the mid, like in the midsection, in the waist, it now has like negative two. So it fits, but it's covered, it's snug right up against my um, upper midriff, because you know, I got two. <laughs> I'm too awesome just to have one. It's really like, hey, hey, Billy, what's up? <laughs> so it is slightly less than flattering. Now the question is, do I go on as planned, suck it up, try to block it out so that it'll be, I guess I could try to block it right now to see if it would block out bigger, because it will block out bigger. 
but will it block out like three inches bigger, two inches bigger? So instead of getting 14 stitches to the four inches, I'm getting 15, which doesn't sound like that much, but it is the difference between one inch of positive ease and negative three inch and negative two inches on my size because I'm so so big, many stitches around. If you're littler, it would not be that much of a difference, but it's a big difference now. Or, so the question is, do I just like roll with it? Because I'm not ripping it out. Let me just clarify that really quickly. I'm not ripping it out. I've got other sweaters. Um, so the question is, it's gonna have a sweater, whatever. The question is, do I continue on and just do it and like and try to stretch out a little bit when I'm knit, when I'm blocking it? Or, cause it's really, it fits fine. It's just like right there. It just hugs a little, little much. Hey, there's fat there. Like I'm trying to fool anybody, but it's a little bit like with an exclamation point. Um, or do I just, plan to do a steak and make it like a short sleeve cardigan. I don't have any short sleeve cardigans. Would that be jaunty? I mean, it would be kind of jaunty, but I really do enjoy the pullover sometimes. So anyway, I can decide. Maybe I will do a steak in it. I have to decide about the steak before I get to here, because I have to plan in the color work to do a steak. Not that I have to, but I should. It would make my life easier. Because if I steak it, I'll get, I can make, I can put a wide button band on it, because I think that would look cute on it anyway, because of the style of it. I would put like a boom button band on it. So not only would it give me extra width, it would also, I could leave it open, like, you know, in the area of troubles. <laughs> in the mountains of regret. So now that we've toured Hobbitland, uh, as determined by my gut size, that's it. That's all the knitting and spinning. So let's talk about what I'm reading. Would you like to know? I like to hear what other people are reading because I am constantly in search of things to read that I will enjoy. Because last week I actually finished a book that I did not enjoy just because I was like, I can't even look for something new. <laughs> I just don't have the will. So this is what happened. I finished, I finally read Gone Girl. That's by Jillian Flynn. It's like a movie now. It's a whole thing. But I've seen it forever and just at the t I will be completely honest with you. I was like, Psh, what's that title? <laughs> and usually when something's made into a movie, it does not inspire me to read it because often <laughs> it was totally good. Very suspenseful and good. Super good for Halloween-y times. I mean, it wasn't scary like Halloween-y, but it was suspenseful. And then on that, then I was like, ooh, I need something Halloween-y. So I read, oh, and I listened to that, to be clear, on the Audible. And then I listened to The Winter People, which is by Jennifer. Somehow my notes ran together. I think it's McMahon or something like that. Anyway, it's called The Winter People. That was really not a great book, but it was totally fun to listen to. <laughs> it's all spooky and mysterious. and It's called The Winter People. Hi, it sounds spooky, right? So it's all like, ooh, the onion layers, and it's got time back and forth, and and it's all witchy, and it was fun. That was good. I enjoyed that. On the, I don't know that I would reading it. I think because at the beginning I had a little trouble because lots of times when a book jumps times, and I I have a little bit of the self-diagnosed ADD, so I'm not. I am just high surprise. I'm not real focused. Baka! It's one of the reasons I don't do custom orders. I just can't do it. I can't handle the stress. So I some, you know, I might like when they change chapters, I might miss that like three seconds. And so when it, we're, when we're not doing a straight narrative, like linear, like, um, I sometimes have trouble on an audio book. Like I'm like, wait, what, what, what's happening? Whereas in a book that you're reading, that's less likely to happen. Cause if nothing else, you can just quick look. Oh, that's right. We're, in the present time, not 1908. So anyway, that was my only issue with it. But then that was very, it, like within three chapters, it was very clear, like, oh, okay, now I know what's going on. You know what I mean? So then the book that I was actually reading, reading that I finished, that was not to be recommended. <laughs> it wasn't terrible, it was fine. It's called Witch for Hire, which is by N.E. Connolly. I 
tried to read that Discovery of Witches book. I also could not read that one. That's another one that I haven't finished that I'll probably start to finish because I'm just like, what else do I do? Right? I know there are plenty of good books in the world, but sometimes you just can't find what suits you. I go through these really weird phases where I'm like, I don't want anything too real. But then I read this The Witch for Hire book and I'm like, oh, this is totally ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's like hard to find that middle ground. <laughs> I don't want to deal with real people's emotions right now. I can't deal with mine. I don't want to read about anybody else's. Okay, I also can't handle you casting rainbow spells in the shower. Like, yeah. <laughs> but Tova, we did read, Tova and I have been reading we just have a system like where she goes to bed and I read for like 10 to 15 minutes to her and then she reads about 15 minutes before she goes to bed. And we have been reading A Tale Dark and Grim, that series. Let me see who that's by because I don't know off the top of my head. It begins with a G. Gillard or something like that. Anyway, so we've been reading this series. There's three in this series and they're, uh, I would say they're probably rated middle schooly, maybe. But they're really fun. They have, um, she's a kid, she likes some humor in her book. Adam Gidwitz. Wow, I don't think they're even close. A Tale Dark and Grim. We're reading right now The Grim Conclusion, which is the last one. And the middle one is In a Glass Grimly. So anyway, they're very fun because they, ha they are, it's what it's supposed to be is a retelling of some of Grimm's tale, fairy tales, but it has these like fun narrative inputs where the narrator comes in and is like, I'm about to tell you something terribly disgusting. You're probably never gonna sleep again. And then he goes on to tell you what it was. And then the narrator will come back and be like, see, I told you that was disgusting. So it's got a fun, it's got a comedic insert into like some like kind of gruesome -y, Again, she's seven. It's not that, it's not dark, dark. It's just, it's dark for a seven-year-old though. Cause like Hansel and Gretel get their heads chopped off and she with glee will retell it to another person. And then their dad cut off their heads. <laughs> so it's, it's really great. I'm trying to see what year it's read. It's listed for 10 and up. Um, she's, she's a decent reader, but the great thing about it is, is, um, Sometimes what I have trouble with her is she's an advanced reader, but we struggle with a content being appropriate. You know, like she's not really, like Hunger Games is not for her. So like, you know, having content that's appropriate for her age, that's not like, you know, smooshy because she's not into that at all. Um, speed, like she needs a fast clip. Like she does not, she's my child and she needs it to, to be paced relatively quickly. Like we don't need to have 30 page chapters. We need to have at least like two pages and then like one of those little mini breaks and things like that. So we struggle with content and we struggle with pace and sometimes we struggle with vocabulary. Um, not in terms of like normal everyday vocabulary, but sometimes books that are either fantasy or time period based will have, um, it's not even just for it's like vocabulary and syntax. Uh, they will have much more, they will have more like an inverted sentence structure or they'll have more of a old timey speech pattern in terms, like just language wise. And so those, like I'm trying to think, we really, I wanted her to read Spirit Animals. That's a series and she loves pandas and one of the spirit animals is a panda. But we struggled with vocabulary and that one was a little bit too complex. Um, so. That was a, this has been a good middle ground for her. And we've really enjoyed those. So we're on the last one now. I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll see. And then, so that's what we're reading. <laughs> and then what else? Oh, what are we watching? I, um, oh, I tried to watch Inspector Morse. I can't do it. I love some British detective business. Inspector Morse, it's actually, you know, it's um, 87, I think. <sighs> I can't do it. <laughs> well, it is very exciting and fun to watch a television show where it is, you know, modern times in terms of like, it's not a period piece and there's no computers anywhere. That's kind of cool, right? 
However, and the cars are insane, so exciting, because uh, British cars in the late 80s were apparently like from a different world altogether that I was not familiar with. Very exciting. Um, but I just can't watch it. It's so slow. So if you think Midsummer is too slow, my hair is very exciting, right? My hair is like clapping for you. But not for Inspector Morse. Sorry. I don't, I'm gonna try again. Maybe I was just feeling especially zing 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 when I was trying to watch it. But the one thing I have been watching that I have been enjoying is Whitechapel. Do you watch that? Have you ever watched it before? It's on Netflix. I don't know if it's on Amazon or not. But it's Whitechapel. It's a British surprise. <laughs> British detective thing. And it's set modern times, and but it has this really, it's super good this time of year because it has this really macabre, like it's not kid friendly, unless your kid is dark and you want them to be darker. Um, it, has, it doesn't really have that much like sexual content, but it is violent and gruesome-y, you know, because it has a tie into historical murders, which is so fun. So it is. It's set in the in the in a modern time, and it's a current murder. It's not like a cold case or anything like that. But they have like a fun research element where there's like a fellow who does their research for them, and they ties it into these historical murders. So you get like a fun. Anyway, it's fun in the way that murders are. <laughs> That's bad, right? So it's called Whitechapel. It's very good. But now I'm like, is it really called White Temple? Yes, it is. I just looked it up to make double sure. It is on Amazon, but it's not. Oh, it's on Prime. So there you go. And all three seasons are on Amazon Prime, as they are on Netflix. So yay, that. I think that's all I have to talk about, right? I shut up. I hope you have a lovely week. Next week, I'll have bags to show you. Um, we'll have the November of holiday bags is coming up. And next week, also... I will be drawing for prizes. I plan to be drawing for prizes for the vertebrae along the vert cow. There's lots of lovely yarn prizes that I showed you. It's bag prizes that have been donated by viewers. I also will have one of these to give you. This was like a little bit of extra fabric. I made one for me and I was like, oh, I have enough to make one for you too. So there'll be one of these bags and they're fantastic. Okay. So that's happening. I think that's all. Anyway, I have a beautiful, lovely week and I'll talk to you next time. I will also talk to you next time in words that you could perhaps understand. <laughs>